Hi everybody, it's Vicki Henze. Today I want to, in this informal chat, continue with the Inspire Me series. And this is uh, part two on five things that writers should ignore. Distractions. Now I know that it's hard to believe that writers can get distracted. I mean, after all, we have a license to daydream. But we can get distracted and then we don't accomplish much of anything. And that's not a good thing. So we need to be a little more disciplined than that, at least at times. Although we do need to keep our daydreaming time. That's not a distraction. That's essential to sanity. The kind of distractions that I'm talking about are volunteering. That would be one. Now, this is going to come across like I'm a cold, mean person who doesn't want to volunteer and to help. Anyone who knows me knows that's not true. But as a writer, you only work and you only get paid if you finish your work. So you have to keep these things in check. As in most things, balance is essential. About volunteering. You may see an opportunity that you think, well, gee, that would be great exposure as well. So not only will it benefit them or this entity that is asking you to volunteer, uh, because it's a good project, it will benefit them for me to be involved, but it'll also benefit me because I'll be exposed to an entirely new group of people or an additional group of people. That's good if you have time to do it. But if you are realistically looking at your schedule and you schedule every minute of every day, you don't have time to take on extra projects. You may want to. You may see the validity of it. I see so many great things that I would love to be involved in, but I just can't do it. I am one person, and so are you. And that's the kind of distraction that I'm talking about. What happens when you volunteer, no matter how much you love the project? You have X amount of time for writing. You have X amount of time for volunteering. In volunteering, other people are counting on you. In writing, if you haven't yet published and the work isn't yet sold, maybe you are only counting on you. But aren't you equally important to the group or the entity? Uh, so you can't throw that balance out and ignore it. What you do is important to you. And <clears throat> when you volunteer, that project deserves your best. If it's worth investing your time in, it's worth investing your the best that you have to give it in. If you can't give it your best, what happens? Who benefits? Nobody, because the project doesn't get the benefit of what it needs. Your writing isn't getting the benefit of what you need. So volunteer, but do it judiciously. Uh, be careful, because otherwise you'll find yourself in the position I found myself in. And that was that if I started working at 5 o'clock in the morning, I got through with my volunteer projects for the day about 3 p.m., the kids came home from school at 3.30. That only left me 30 minutes of quality writing time per day. The balance was off. So be wiser, be more judicious, and volunteer, but do it and, and have that sort of distraction judiciously so that you can do your best at both your writing and your projects. I'm not going to waste a lot of your time talking about the little distractions that we all know takes place, like the telephone ringing, 14 phone calls. Um, you start out going to check email real quick, and an hour later you're still checking email, or, you know, the other, the other things that come up like that. You know that you have to guard against that kind of busy work. But there is another kind of busy work, and that kind of busy work is worth us talking about a little bit more here. And that is when you're riding along and all of a sudden you hit a brick wall and you think, 
emptying that dishwasher looks pretty good or mowing that lawn looks pretty good. There can be two reasons for that. One is avoidance, where you have gotten to a, an, an emotional invested point in the story that makes you uncomfortable. Anytime we traipse outside our comfort zone, we don't like it. Nobody likes to be outside their comfort zone. But we have to traipse outside our comfort zone and get outside it to get to the other side of whatever it is. So make sure that the busy work that looks so appealing isn't simply you wanting to avoid having to invest or dig deeper into that emotion. Uh, many years ago, uh, I, I wrote about abuse, and that was very difficult for me because I was an abuse victim very early on, not with my parents later. Uh, when you are an abuse victim, and you then write about abuse, even though all these years had passed in between, it brings it all back because you get so immersed in the writing that it's everything you're reliving it. It's all fresh and new, like it's happening right now. And I thought I was prepared for the um, emotional impact of that, but I found the dishwasher looking really good and a vacuum cleaner looking really good. Things like that that really look bad to me normally. And what it was was I didn't want to feel that emotion. I didn't want to feel that pain. Now, Sometimes you may need to back off from that project and give yourself some distance. Give yourself time to get accustomed to the idea, I'm going to have to revisit those dark places. And I'm going to have to do it to be honest in the writing. If you can't be honest in the writing, don't bother picking up the pen. You've got to be honest in the writing. You may need a little time. You may need simply to be aware that of what is actually happening. This breaches your comfort zone. It makes you go through things that you don't want to go through again. And yet, because you've been through them, you're great to write about it because you totally understand it from the inside out. It's not something that isn't something that can be faked. When you've experienced it, it shows in a hundred different ways. So your avoidance can be due to discomfort or you crossing outside the bounds of your comfort zone. Or it can be you're having a little whimsical day and you just need some playtime. Now, in most careers, your boss would look at you a little bit wacky about saying, I need to play. However, when you write, you pull all of these things out of your creative well. And every once in a while, you just have to hit a gas station and refill. You have to fill that well back up so that you have a deeper well to draw from. So if you get that message, if you hit that brick wall and you can't seem to push your way through it or to work through it, Figure it that, that you're having the whimsy moment. Hit the gas station. Give yourself a, a, a little bit of time off to refill the creative well. And then when you go back to the work, you'll do it refreshed and not frustrated. That's very important, too. You have to respect the muse as well as the person. That does not give you an excuse license to goof off all the time. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about you, the wise adult, realizing that to finish anything, you must get started. To really finish anything, you have to have the discipline to stick with it. But I am reminding you that you are in a creative pursuit. And being in a creative pursuit requires more from you than a physical mindless action. It encompasses all of you, and that empties your creative well, so refill it. Another thing I wanted to say is a lot of writers consider reading other people's work a distraction. 
I want to explain that that is not a distraction. First of all, it's essential to your career that you know what's going on in your market. Nothing is going to educate you on that as much as reading the work that's out there. New writers in particular. I, I know, I felt it too. You get so excited about writing and so enthused with writing that you don't want to read somebody else's stuff. You want to write your own. That's good. That enthusiasm is fabulous. It will give you the discipline to keep writing until you master a lot of things in, in it. You're never going to master all of it. Nobody does. But to master a lot of things in it. You need that excitement. But you also need to understand your market if you're writing to sell. If you're writing for your own pleasure, do what you want. But if you're writing to produce books that you hope to sell, then continue reading. Very important. Not just so that you know what's going on in the market, but also so that you are aware of how other writers do things. What techniques they use, what methods they use, what works for you, what doesn't. You'll note things in books that you really like. You'll, you'll read some sentences over just because of the sheer beauty of the cadence attracts you so much. Or the phraseology is unusual and it, and it just snags your attention. You'll note things that make you feel. You'll note things that, that irk you to no end. Uh, you if you get to a point where you want to hurl a book across a room, well, you need to know what made you feel that way so that you don't put it in your own books. So continue reading. Reading is not a distraction. It's essential. Understand, too, that there are times when busy work is a good thing, not a bad thing. It can give you the opportunity to occupy yourself somewhere else and that's good because your subconscious then can work on all of the information that you fed into it on your story. See it's important to understand how the subconscious works. Your your conscious mind has filters and it blocks things all the time. It has to or it drives insane. But your subconscious mind misses nothing, forgets nothing. It takes everything in and it takes it all in in a literal sense. So while you get busy doing busy work, your subconscious mind has time to slot out and sort out problems that have occurred in your story. Maybe you have a logic gap or a, an inconsistency in characterization or something else that just doesn't quite fit. Your subconscious mind will slot it and tell you consciously later that it doesn't fit. The busy work gives you something else to focus on while your subconscious is working. So that, that kind of busy work interruption is a really good thing. It gives time for the ducks to line up inside our minds or in our stories. Another thing that I found uh, that happens over and over again is I'll have an idea for a project and I may have four or five different elements that I want to work into that project and they all fit together but I need something else and I can't quite figure out what it is and so I just leave it be let it rest and something will happen I'll hear something some little snippet on the news a little bit of an overheard conversation I don't cook, so naturally I get epiphanies in grocery stores. So I'll be in a grocery store and something will snap to where that is exactly the piece that I need that was missing for the project. Sometimes you just have to wait for the ducks to line up. That's not a distraction either, although it's often interpreted as one. You can get distracted by professionals also. You might have um, uh, an agent who says, X publisher is looking for this type of book if you want to do it. Now, we covered that in What to Write, so I'm not going to go into it a lot here. But understand that anything that takes you off of your path, your career path, 
not the one somebody else chooses for you, the one you choose for yourself. Anything that takes you off of that is a distraction. So I'm not saying don't take detours. I've taken plenty of detours and, uh, and they've been worth it. You have to decide whether a specific distraction is worth it to you and, and to do so consciously. You know, too often we'll drift. We go from project to project and we find we're, you know, we're the proposal queen or king. We end up doing 15 proposals, but we haven't finished a book. And that's not a good thing. We don't want to get distracted like that. That's one of the flaws that happens when you chase the market. That's one of the flaws that happens when you try to fit a slot rather than to fit your purpose. Here we go, right back to purpose again. Okay, we're going to end there. This is getting long and I apologize for that. I get wound up and just can't seem to stop myself. Uh, we're going to end here and next time we'll pick up with must-dos. Oh boy, are you going to enjoy that one. Hope you found something useful and wishing you until next time and forever many blessings. Thank you.